Hello everybody, welcome to George Reviews. I'm your host, I am the 80s Transformers fan. Today on George Reviews, we'll be taking a look at Mumra, the ever-living. This figure is produced from Super 7. It is part of their Ultimate Lines. This is the packaging before you. On the front of the box, it's a pretty cool logo. The symbol is seen on Mumra's chest, the intertwining snakes. I don't know if he stole that from Conan. And Thundercats at the bottom, you can see ages. 14 plus super 7 on the back of the box as the figure rotates you can see Thundercats in the traditional logo and writing right there and as we remove the slip cover You can see mum rock clearly within awesome packaging and the coolest thing about this packaging You can reseal this packaging put mum rock back into the clamshell and display him just like this after removing him Playing with him displaying him and everything so it's very nice packaging from super 7 in addition to clearly seeing Mumra and all of his accessories fully within the packaging, on the back of the box, you can see some pretty cool artwork from Mumra. And he's wielding a sword that he does not come with. It's a sword from the vintage figure, and I'll discuss that a little bit later on in the review. And there's a little bit of a bio for those who don't remember or don't know that much about Mumra. So you can get caught up with that real quick and also it says Super 7. But we're going to get Mumra off the turntable and get him open and take a closer look. A huge part of my channel's gimmick is to unbox on camera whenever possible to share the experience and a new toy feel for people who may want this figure, may not have it, or may want to relive it again. So with one snip of the tape, there's nothing further in this huge packaging. With Mum Ra. He's a big hefty guy. Here he is. There's some tie downs on him. And behind him, there's an inner clam. We get cloth fabric cape. I love cloth capes. And behind him is the Sword of Plundar and the Thundarian Gyroscope, I believe that is. And in the main clam, we get Mum Ra, his alternate hands, alternate face, and Marmut. So I'm going to get them loose and we're going to check them out. Here he is out of the packaging and immediately I can see some paint splotching. I saw it in the packaging on the turntable as well. Um, a little bit of red right here and right here. Looks like he got some glitter going on. You see that? The glitter reflecting right here like some green glitter. Like what the heck is glitter coming from? Now for Marmut. I don't think he's tied down. Just inside the packaging. Mumra's additional head. And I've heard and I see on mine the misaligned snakes coming out of his, what is this, crown helmet or whatever. I've heard complaints about this. And clearly, here it is on mine. That sucks immediately. Wow. Batman! 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 Oh, wrong property. Sword of Plunder. We don't want to break this. Oh, came out pretty easy. This thing is huge. Look at this. Wow. I mean, it's huge. I saw it in the pack, but like it's really big. And the gyroscope thing made absolutely no sense. Okay, before I jump into the actual figure review, I want to talk a little bit about Super 7 and their figure rollout. I got this guy back in May. I didn't have the opportunity to review it because I was fresh out of a surgery, but that's not important to the story. But he's been out for a while now. And it took a long time to get this figure and other figures from Super 7. And then when they finally, he's from Wave 2. And when they finally started releasing the figures, not all the figures from Wave 2 were available. Then the figures came out back to back, sort of like uh, clogging, coming through the pipe. Um, wave 2, Wave 3, then they finally got around to Chara, but I say all this to say they've always had some type of issue with these figures no matter what, and they kind of want you to buy these figures from them. You, you don't have to, you can like pre-order them off Big Bad, not prepay, but they kind of want you to prepay 
for these figures and it's just always an issue and I just want to talk about that looking at my figure I just unpackaged the guy just on, on video um, he has paint splotches here and here and this is not uncommon I'm not this happens with figures across the board but I do want to just point out that these guys have more issues than most and they pretty much get a lot of money up front paint, paint splotch here we got paint missing from the helmet here paint splotch here and these guys want your money up front and a little bit off the paint sculpt here um, and a lot of this isn't terrible don't get me wrong but these guys are notorious right here for issues and then they take so long to get you a figure and it, it's always something so um, I, I do want to say that because I buy their figures from them and I, I support them um, because I want the figures not because I had love for the brand or the company but I want these figures I'm a fan of Thundercats but man I, I just want to say in this video review that they always have issues and we're looking at them right now so I want to delve into the figure and just go ahead and get this rolling He's a very yeah, let's start with his face. So taking a closer look at Mumra's face, head, and helmet. The eyes are uh, a nice red paint with a little black outline to him. He has these white eyebrow things, whatever they are. His jacked up teeth as they appeared in the cartoon with some black outline to his mouth. He's wearing a double snake helmet. From the logo on his chest he has like these tassels or bandages hanging from it where the red and the black comes from i don't know maybe it's shards of the cape once he transforms some gold paint going around and it's not the finest job done i already pointed out the scrape on the helmet and everything but the snakes the snakes look cool the gold right here the little crest look cool so it looks good overall on the head uh, then he has bandages around his neck and body. I wonder if these things actually remove. I think it's molded in up here and then glued on right here on the right arm. He doesn't have bandages over here. He has some gold bracers on his arm on both sides. None of this. This is all sculpted in and painted over. You can see because the paint is not done that well on the bracelets, gauntlets, whatever you want to call them. It's part of his body, part of the sculpt. And these right here. I don't know if these remove. I'll get to pulling on stuff a little bit later. I'm gonna keep going. Coming down to his um, was his skirt tunic. Whoa, whoa, mum rock. Whoa, whoa. He, he's naked under there. Whoa. <laughs> Didn't expect that. You know they could have just hit it with some black for the trunks, or is he just walking around just balls free <laughs> on Thunder? <down> you know. <laughs> yeah. I, honestly, I wasn't expecting that. I thought I just knew it would be some type of blackish charcoal gray like this paint under here. And let's take a look. It's, it's a flat black right here, and then a flat red right here, and it could be done better right there. Trimmed in gold, same gold as on his gauntlets. Um, coming down to his legs, and he has what are these shin guards? I don't know. Gold and brown. They're done pretty decent, except for I pointed that out already. Some more mummy bandaging at his ankles, and like tuft of hair on his feet, like a hobbit or something. Or maybe the hobbit got it from him well molded toes and a pig hole or a pig stand that don't exist oh and the logo on his chest the two snakes coming together crumb <laughs> and a little bit of a nick right there but this is pretty this is pretty much is uh, on point right here on his chest and like is this a tat because it's like it's raised uh, on mumra what is it actually on mumra and speaking of um actual mumra the vintage toy is green or minty green on a cartoon he was always minty green but this figure is blue and when I first got the figure in May I always wonder why would they do him in like this blue I mean he's been depicted in artwork and statue figures over the years as blue but the cartoon the original toy had the mint green but recently after I received the toy I see they're gonna release a vintage toy version and that figure is minty green which now it makes sense why this figure is more blue than minty green well played super seven the search for more money let's get down to his articulation his head he got a lot of stuff going on so i really don't want to force it there we go we got a three uh oh we're gonna go back we're gonna go back <laughs> it probably will 360 uh oh i got bandages stuck Right, let's not do that again, but it probably will 360 if you force it. 
I'm not gonna do that. Not much. I think because of everything under his neck. I think that's why, but not much head movement. I can't get much up or down. We got the left, right, and then that's it. The articulation is very much hindered or not existing. But he got bandages all the way up to his neck, so I, I believe it's hindered. His arms. Ooh, wow. This is it. This is high as they come to the sides. That that sucks. So let's get it to 360 right there. He has a bicep swivel again, wrapped in bandages. And I believe this is glued on right here. Coming to his elbow bend. And it's the sculpt not allowing it to come up further than this. Coming to his wrist, he has a hinge in there. He can get the hands in and out. 360 at that wrist. His fingers look pretty decent, molded in. Nail on the thumb right there. Same thing on the other hand. I'm assuming the articulation carries over to this side. You know, we got an extra band. All right, Mumra's waist does a full 360, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea to fully 360 it. And, and it breaks up the scope. And when you do, you're bending this softer plastic right here, stretching it out of shape, and at the same time, um, scraping off paint, if you can see that. So, yeah, it's some issues, and I, I think... Not to blame Super 7 for everything, you got like a design choice to make and then parts to put on it and then make it function. So there's some things going on that's like not just Super 7 effing up. Okay, trying to get his leg forward to the front is hindered by the skirt. His legs can come out this far to the sides. So we can get his leg up this far and back to this far. You can force it more, but I'm not forcing mine. He has an upper thigh swivel that will 360 right there. Coming to his knee. You get this much out, and that, that could be more. And I do understand they're trying to keep the Mumra scope look with the big, beefy body muscular, but they could have did something different with the hinge. Maybe continue the hinge down here and allow it to flex a little bit more. Even though Mumra didn't do a lot physically, he didn't, but still, you want the articulation out of your action figure. Coming down to his ankle, see if we can get some... I'm not getting anything. I'm just getting a rocker. There is no swivel... Well, I guess it swivels at the knee. They put it in here I, for whatever reason, I guess to keep a clean ankle because he's barefooted to make this look better. I'm not sure. But it actually, it's not bad looking. So we got the rocker down here and the swivel up here. And that is basically it for Mumrod's articulation. Not fantastic and it's hindered. And I can kind of see why. And I would never make an excuse for these guys. But I kind of see what's going on that... that hinders it or whatever all right now to switch mumra's head that's the first thing i want to do because i really want to talk about that and see what's going on underneath the neck area underneath the head neck so yeah here are the bandages that i think are hindering and it comes around to the waist yeah and it's kind of glued on his back so this thing you can take it down but it's really not going anywhere but i do want to test the articulation without it so and and it's not the bandages you can get a little bit more side to side but it's not the bandages um hindering the head articulation so there we go with that now switching to the alternate head the mouth open laughing maniacally all right i pushed it down as far as i could it didn't snap but i think it's on there all right now the helmet appears to be the exact same helmet with a different facial expression the molding of the tassel they seem to be they line up a little bit different but they seem to be the exact same mold in the tassel. So we're just going to say, I'm just going to say it's the same exact helmet. Just um, the plastic lays a little bit different. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the snakes on the helmet. And not on the plane. I believe this is his right side. I believe he has two right side snakes. Because this, this just isn't off location. This is this side. And that's why it's down like that. But, uh, yeah, that sucks. I mean, Super 7, that really sucks. I mean, the quality control issues continue to this day. Continue. But let's take a look at the face underneath. And the mouth looks pretty cool. Does Mumra have a tongue or is it just like empty space? I think it was like empty space and slob. Slime or slob in his mouth. But that looks pretty cool. Looks just like his teeth on the cartoon. The eyes are done well on here. The paint is done better, but is not perfect we have a, a red splotch right here and then the jacked up antennae snake right there just doing their own damn thing thanks brian 
sucks and the funny thing is i think i saw a video while you know i'm sitting around anticipating getting mine i'm checking out videos getting geeked up and another guy had an issue with his or whatever i, I believe i want to say he said he contacted those guys and they sent them a corrected um snake but it's been a while since i opened mine i don't know if I, it'll happen for me but i will give it a shot all right, next up, I want to connect the cape. I want the full-blown mumra. I was going to keep running through accessories, but I need the cape as part of them. So let's do that Total right play. now. Wait a minute. Does the well, I checked the box for instructions for this thing, and there is none. There's a hole here. Um, two holes on either side right here. Batman! Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> two holes on the other side, either sides here. I think because this is a larger hole, it goes over the neck peg. I think maybe, but it's... Yeah, there we go. But it's not a whole lot of room on that thing. And I believe these little gauntlet pieces, because they're extended beyond this one, it has a little groove right here. It goes on here. I remember seeing a review, but I don't remember everything I saw. And now we got to squeeze a dang on head back on, you know? Over the little cape pieces already, like a funny, weird fit. I'll just give it a push. All right, I think old crooked helmet's on here. I think this is it. Let's switch some hands. Let's, um, all right, um, they're on two pegs or whatever, same standard stuff across multiple toy lines. This is pretty much what you get with Marvel Legends, anything. So, gonna give it a yank. Give it a yank. Gripping right hand. Gripping left hand. Nope. All right, they're in there pretty good. Same motions, whatever. I'm not gonna go over that same, same thing. Whoa, wait a minute. Look, whoa, what the, what the, look. My thing, it popped out. I'm assuming it was just like lightly glued in there, but it popped right out. Man, Super 7, you son of a... Like, is that standard? Was that supposed to happen? Was that, does that happen to keep you from damaging the cake? I don't know. I don't know, but that happened. That just happened. You saw that happen. And here's the gyroscope. All right, here we go. We got the gyroscope in hand, and this was from... Uh, new thunder or what um, when a planet reformed but it was unstable but it reformed which made no sense it was a lot of goofy plot devices from thundercats but the planet reformed and they had this gyroscope to kind of keep it together mumra tried to steal it or did steal it so the planet could destabilize and come apart but here it is it's not right, one thing i want to point out the mummy form the smaller mumra came with the hilt to the sword of plunder and they are completely different. This one is much thicker, much larger. Um, Lengthwise, it's about the same. And you know, I totally understand the smaller Mumra was meant to grip this, and this is larger for the larger Mumra hands. But what I don't understand is how we have this flat mustard yellow, and then we have this vibrant gold. You know, um, who botched that? All right, before yeah. I get the sword in Mumra's hand, the Sword of Plundar, bring it a little bit closer. The sword itself is gray plastic, and the hilt is painted uh, mustard yellow, I guess. And this right here is done pretty well. It feels sturdy enough, so I'm going to get it in Mumra's hand. He has no problem gripping it. Looks pretty awesome. It looks better than I thought or hoped. It, it, and again, there's no paint on it, but just the size of it alone and the plastic is very, very cool. I, I like it. I'm really enjoying it. And I also wanted to take, I pulled the cape out earlier, but I want to take another look at it. The cape has these cuts in it to make it look tattered, which is a nice touch. But it also has like some um, unraveling. And I'm not sure if that is intentional. The, the stitch line is above that to secure it. So these little pieces may be intentional, but I'm not sure. <laughs> no one's super sad. I'm giving the benefit of the doubt because it's nowhere else on the cape. And the cape is cool. It has a wire in it. 
um, what is it? One, two, three, four, five wires. Count the top, cross the top, six wires in it. So you can bend it and pose it. I'm happy with it, like, open like this. So I don't want to bend it and pose it. He's probably going to be like this on the shelf. But not with these hands. Um, I got one more thing to do with Mumrod. Take these hands off. And boom, put these hands on. These are like the creepy hands, the open hands where he's like approaching you. Ah, I'm going to get you, Thundercat. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're necessary for holding anything. You can get him to hold it, I guess, because that little pinky finger comes in. He doesn't have a really good grip. Mumra's final accessory, and probably, I don't know, that sword is pretty cool. All right, the coolest of his accessories is Marmut. He has a little bit of dry brushing on him. He's like a um, bluish gray. Looks like a bulldog, a third earth bulldog. Or whatever he's mostly the, the bluish gray plastic with some lighter gray painted over him he's got these jaws on him these tusks like teeth coming up from the bottom he has red eyes sort of like mum ra black nose his ears either they're very very well painted or they're casted in a different plastic and installed into the head that's what it looks like to me which I love when they do things like that. Red collar with some goldish brass looking spikes. And he is articulated. We're going to start with his head. It actually rotates at the dog collar. Wasn't expecting that. No up and down. His front paws. They can do this. And you know he was seen flying a few times. He even transformed into a bat once. Grew big and everything. Marma had a pretty key role in some of the episodes. The, the front legs really don't go back. This, they go back to the standard position and just come forward. But the back legs come forward and back. We got to see if he'll sit on his butt. And the little tail piece, while actually being a separate piece, I believe, does not articulate. Let's see if we can sit him on his butt. Maybe, uh, uh kind of. I guess it'll work in some photography, but not really. So I'm going to size him up and run him down. Here he is with Generation 1 Megatron, G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Commander, Star Wars The Black Series Dark Lord of the Sith. Oh, it's a party now. Here he is with Super 7's Filmation, Master of the Universe Classics, Skeletor. Mumra's mummified mummy form. And a size up and run down would not be complete without the Lord of the Thundercats, also from Super 7. All right. Coming to the end of another Super 7's Ultimates toy review, specifically Thundercats, it's the same talking point. The quality control issue. Paint splotches is one thing. Sometimes they can be wiped off, rubbed off, um, touched up. With a little bit of effort can be corrected. But when you have misassembled parts, and misassembled parts on key points in the toy like the helmet that, that just looks bad with the snake man you, you know that sucks and you you're gonna have issues in manufacturing and at the factory it, it's the guys at super seven as a corporation that chooses to release these figures that that take the chance on well we'll see how many people complain how many parts per thousand are we having this issue on what's acceptable and, and if we have a big enough issue we'll try to correct it later but they're they're um they're putting out junk pretty much as far as um with the knowledge and i hate to just call it junk because the scope is amazing um the articulation could be, be better but it's pretty good what they tried to do is a damn good toy probably the best mumra in existence but when you've had the issue and you continue to have the issues, that's a problem. If there were no quality control issues, this figure would probably be an 8. And it would be higher if it had better articulation. But the level of accessories are just right. It's not too many. It's not too few. They speak to the character and what we've seen on screen from Mumra. So that, that regard was really good. Um, the, the actual face sculpts were good. But, man, when they missed on some parts, they really missed on some parts. And I got to hold it to that. And I get this this toy maybe a 6.0. If I, if I can't get another head, because that, that really ruins it. This is the head that I want to display it with. Man, because it, it sucks. But that's all I got. I want to thank you all for watching another episode of George Reviews. The reviews of every toy has a story. And with Super 7, the story is quality control once again.